consultant. <laughs> I'm a consulting engineer uh, doing a lot of land development engineering for developers and uh, my expertise is civil engineering. So uh, public improvements, transportation, uh, water, wastewater. Uh, I, I help manage our group that, that does those kind of things, but we do other work in the energy sector as well. I'm representing the Stormwater Advisory Board. Uh, been on that six, seven, maybe 10 years, I don't know, but for a while. And uh, we worked on the offsite CMPs, that, uh, the program that got put in place a few years back that uh, helps manage some of the requirements for uh, permanent BMPs and stormwater quality. And so that, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Um, yeah. Is Gene Rapp still with the agency? He is not. He's retired. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he's been retired about five years or so, yeah. probably. He's yep. a good guy. Yep, I've known him throughout my whole career. Yeah. Um, Jim Michael, you want to introduce yourself with a brief uh, background? Hi, Mike McCorkle. Uh, I'm highly motivated to be involved with this board and the important work that it represents for the future prosperity of our community and the health of all Wichita. I was born and raised here in Wichita, but have lived outside of Kansas since the 80s until I returned in 2019 to look after my aging parents. I became concerned about this issue through the uh, prism of climate change because that is a global problem. We're all part of the problem. We're all part of the solution. We're living in a global climate emergency. I have seen smog so thick in China, you could not see another building across the White Boulevard in Beijing, dying coral in Madagascar, and the warmest summer in 342 years in Scandinavia. I've also lived in cities whose leaders acknowledge climate change and govern with people and planet prioritized over corporate profits and business as usual. Recent extreme weather events here in the U.S. have brought the reality of climate change closer to home for most Americans, finally. We have the opportunity to advise and support our city council to provide strong public leadership and honesty about climate change and the path to solving it. That we are setting here today is a tribute to the work done over many years by local activists concerned about Wichita's future. The work continues, and I look forward to working with the other members of this board and city officials. I would also like to thank uh, District 3 City Councilman Mike Hoheisel for this appointment and his trust to work for the Common Board. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. Um, Jim, you want to We'll go ahead and move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, you've all had a chance to review our minutes from January 19th. Is there any comment on that at this time? No? Okay. Um, so would someone like to make a motion? I'll move. Laura? Yep. I'll second? move to approve the notes. Okay. Okay. And then all in favor of approving the minutes um, as they were presented, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. That is our approved, and we'll go ahead and get those um, posted soon. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the public comment period. Um, if anyone uh, here or online would like to uh, make a comment. You have five minutes um, to do so. Um, please state your name um, and speak clearly so that everyone on Zoom and in the room can hear you. Um, sure, wherever you'd like. And then if you want to use the microphone, that might help a little bit. <laughs> that might help a lot. Right? <laughs> there you go. I hope everyone can hear me. I hope you guys on TV can hear me on, on Zoom. Uh, my name is Harold Schlegway. I live at uh, 351 North Front Street in Wichita, Kansas. 
I've lived there since 2008. I lived in Wichita since 1995. And I'm coming to you about an issue and a concern that I have. I want to say a little bit about how it happened. I went to a neighborhood meeting, Delano neighborhood. I live in Delano. And uh, one of the people there was complaining that the park department, forestry, had taken down and removed a large oak tree from his house. And he hadn't been informed about that. It was on, it was on the city right away between the sidewalk and the street. Later on, I uh, went down the street behind mine and I saw trucks from the city forestry department removing the tree. And I stopped and I talked to the workers, city workers. I said, why are you taking, removing the tree? And they said, well, it's dead. We have to take it down. I asked the guy, I said, are you going to plant another one here? He said, probably not. I uh, went out the next day and they said, I'm handing out if you look here. Within a two block area of my house, I counted eight stumps on the city right away. This is within a two block radius of my house on Vine, third block of Vine, which I'll hand this. Uh, and uh, that really sparked my curiosity. I started doing some research. Other things that got my interest were there was a private development for those of you who know Riverside in uh, near 13th Street North on the river. There's a bunch of new houses going up there. Uh, just north of Sim Park. And uh, as you can see, there may be little trees that get planted in there, but, uh, and, and there were no trees planted there, but now that area can't be used to, for a canopy. So that concerned me. Another issue, I walk that area all the time. I walk down by the river. This is uh, on the north end of Old Cowtown. And this is a parking lot that was put in uh, on city property, and there were a few trees removed in, in this event. And uh, this is for uh, Botanica, so that when they do events there, they can have more parking. So all these things got me concerned about the tree canopy. So I started looking at the park budget, and uh, what I found out was that we've been losing about 5,000 trees a, a year a deficit. The trees that are being planted do not replace the trees that are coming out. I think it's a major issue. I think which does, when they start realizing what's going on, our citizens are going to be very upset about it. This is from the 2022-23 adopted budget. And you can see the net gain or loss in the tree canopy. Underneath there, you can see park expenditures per acre. Uh, right here is the benchmark. The benchmark of zero means that the benchmark is one tree should be planted for every tree removed. That's not happening. Of course, this is public trees. The, one of the things that I showed you was private developers and what developers are doing to our city as well. So in any case, I went to the park board last meeting, board of park commissioners, asked for three things. Recommendation, first of all, that the city council fund the forestry section to be able to meet the ICMA benchmark of one tree planted for each tree removed. If they just increase the budget, forestry has been losing money for a long time. The park department, the part that takes care of the parks has had its budget go down. Certainly forestry, they have $175,000 for planting trees that's not enough. We're going to continue to have a deficit. Our trees are aging now in our neighborhoods. Number two, I asked that the city recommend to the city council, or that the board park commissioners recommended the city council that the city fund a new geospatial tree canopy assessment study similar to the one done in 2017. If you go to the park department, if you look on their, their uh, page, you can find out, you can actually see that tree canopy assessment study. That's a benchmark. If we get another one done, we'll be able to see what's happened in this city since 2017 to our tree canopy. I want to laud you guys because that's one of the things you're going to be looking at is the tree canopy study. And I think that's great and wonderful. Anyway, that's all I got to say. You can see my ask of the board of the 
park commissioner and I asked the same thing to you that we put more money in the forestry. Uh, they need to have more workers and they need to be able to have more trees and they need to start replacing them one for one. Uh, I will say something else too about Delano real quickly. Delano may, people may think it's another neighborhood like Riverside, it's not. It's one of the lowest income areas in the city when you get, when you get outside of the way from the river bank. Those high dollar apartments at the river, uh, that's not that's not really the lane of the neighborhoods behind it are. 70% rental housing. And uh, we have a lot of people that are moving in and out all the time. Uh, part of the reason why these trees don't get replaced for the lane of, even if the money was there to do it, the city, the landowner has to agree to take care of it. And if you've got an absentee landlord, uh, that's not likely to happen. And if you're a renter who's moving out in two years, uh, they're probably not going to ask for it either. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your service. We'll see you in the workshop. Thanks, Bob, for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I, question. I, I live on Fern about a blocks out the new. Oh. And I absolutely agree that the, the city forestry division needs park department division needs to be funded more highly. A lot of that was because of COVID. The city budget got cut in a lot of areas and that was considered not essential. But it's not just Delano, it's everywhere, and it's because a lot of the big street trees in this community were planted 100 years ago and they're aging out now. And even though it breaks everybody's heart to see one of them go, they, at a certain point they become a hazard and they have to be taken down. And that's, that's why we're in the hole and the hole's getting deeper fast is because we've been living on the benefits of people who planted trees 100 years ago. So I agree um, beyond that. I, I, will, I will tell you, I did, did some research and back when, we, when this guy uh, Pat Clapp and then the golf course out there, when he was the mayor of Wichita, he was the president of the park board, they planted a thousand trees a year. And the city of Wichita had 90,000 people. 90,000 people paid for a thousand trees to be planted a year. We got 400,000 people now. 400,000. Or if you do the math, we could be doing better. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Harold. Sure. Is there any other um, public comments at this time? We had one from um, Bruce Blank on the on Zoom. Okay, Bruce, would you like to um, speak to that comment? Yes. Um, hold on a second here. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, first, first of all, I want to pre I appreciate all the time and effort uh, put out by everybody here for the sustainability board. My specific comment was about the model framework for sustainability goals. This is very important to me personally. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on uh, what they would call sustainable economic development scenarios. And uh, I came across this model called the donut model. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, uh, it is an economic model that utilizes the idea of a finite set of resources with finite uh, energy resources. And basically it's a template for allowing sustainability to be adapted to any city, town, state, country, or nation. And uh, I just wanted to throw it out there if you, nobody's had a chance to look at that model, uh, how it may in fact uh, work in alignment with the CDP scoring system uh, and then actually can uh, improve it. Um, Amsterdam, the city of Amsterdam has adopted this as their official model going forward for economic development. And uh, as we are focused on sustainability, that key word, I would encourage everybody to go take a look at that model, uh, see what you think and see if it may apply to uh, our sustainability board here in Wichita. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments before we move on? All right.
righty. Seeing no other comments, um, we'll go ahead and uh, close the, pub, um, the public comment period um, and move on to our um, discussion items for uh, this afternoon. Um, the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention, um, you all saw this in um, the agenda packet, um, was the NASA DEVELOP uh, project. So this is a proposed project um, that uh, NASA approached us with. It's part of their DEVELOP team. It's where they bring in interns to um, really get them um, working well with satellite data. And so they work with a bunch of different municipalities and nonprofits um, all over the country to do work um, that will benefit um, these organizations um, and communities through um, at, at no cost to the client. So what they have proposed is a heat mapping project, uh, which would essentially utilize uh, the canopy data that we already have, uh, potentially bring in some additional uh, satellite data and really look at those temperature differentials uh, within our built environment uh, to see where we're seeing sort of these pockets of high temperature, who's being affected by that, um, seeing, you know, sort of those disparities. Uh, let me just uh, scroll down to that really quick. So this is just, um, this is the proposed, uh, or the project proposal. Uh, this isn't set in stone or anything, but this is what they have um, given us as the potential project, which would start uh, in June. This would be a 10 week project that their intern would do. Uh, we would be um, communicating with them um, once a week or so, just to make sure that they're staying in line with what the city's goals are. Um, and then we would get the results um, in the fall to be able to utilize for educational purposes, uh, for goal setting, um, for outreach to communities. Um, and so I wanted to see if you guys had any comments, um, questions, or anything like that. And then, you know, before we sort of hit the ground with this, want to make sure that you guys feel that this is um, within what the sustainability board feels is important and wants to, um, you know, say, okay, we should do this, this project. So I'm happy to answer any questions or clarify anything. I know there's, it is a lot of information. Um, David, does their deliverable just include observations and data or does it also include suggestions and possible Right, I think take from. Mm -hmm. So I think their their final deliverable uh, will be some sort of interactive um, map, and they will identify you know specific areas with uh, maybe some general recommendations. Or you know you could um, like for example, this would mitigate this by how much by right you know, so mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's not just data on a map. They exactly, actually, okay, exactly. So they they would be doing some interpretation there. But, so you know they're not just going to throw us this map and we're like, like, all right, how do we look at this? Look at this right, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So they would help to okay. kind of lead us. Um, and it's not necessarily saying we would have to do that, but it would give us some really good data to start with uh, to go forward. Is this going to be um, coordinated with or coordinated by the GIS department? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I have been uh, speaking with them um, to see how we could best incorporate it, uh, since a lot of it would be, you know, spatial data. Um, and so we've been talking about uh, what the best way to sort of integrate that into the city systems would be because um, ultimately we want this information to be accessible to the public. So we want it to be a, a teaching tool. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a work in progress to figure out, you know, what exactly is the best way to do that. Um, but, you know, they have the capability to um, put this on a separate platform or integrate it into um, the city's database. Um, so there's, there's a few different ways we could do that. To me, I mean, the data itself would have value, but if we can incorporate that data into our GIS system and then be able to overlay it with every other bit of data that's already in there on economics and, and 
everything else, that would be really valuable. I, I don't see any downside. I mean, it, it yeah. sounds like a wonderful opportunity for the city. It could help. It also can work along with our tree canopy, some of the issues that Harold mentioned. Exactly. Yeah. The cool cities effort that we spoke about before. Mm -hmm. All of this could be, this could be a really good data to have for that. We could see, as far as social justice, are there areas in the city that are impoverished? And so the trees have not been replaced, or they don't have the money to plant trees. And we'd be able to see which areas in the city might need to be targeted with that tree planting. And hopefully we can get more money for the forestry department so they can plant trees right i know you know we've talked a bit about um mitigation um and i know that is something that is um very much included in sustainability talks as far as resiliency planning and so i just wanted to um you know kind of get your seal of approval if you will um before we really dive into this um and um you know start working with um with their team um, um, with that being said, we all feel that we need to bring it to a, a vote or a, you know, motion to have this, I guess, approved, or do you feel comfortable just moving forward? I leave it, I leave so it to you guys. Is, is the city council going to make the final decision? So um, that we would make a recommendation to the city council that we'd like it, them to It may this. go to city council. I'm not sure yet if there will be a specific contract. Um, we haven't gotten that um, determination just yet, but if there is a contract, it will probably need to go to city council, in which case it would be um, awesome to have a formal recommendation from the board. I would like to make a motion that this board recommend the city council that they pursue this opportunity to have the NASA develop program implemented. Second. Is there a cost? I no. Thought no. I, I thought there wasn't, but I just want to make sure. Right. It's it's at no cost to the city. Right. Um, we our only thing that we're really providing is just our time right. um, once a week to check in. And there's there's no obligation to do anything with the data. So we're we are under no stipulations as to how we use the data going forward after we have it. Is there a, like a representative way to compare what something auto, I mean, as they create these heat maps, like what it would have been if you hadn't developed versus what it is now. I mean, um, it's kind of like you get this data and you really you think the worst of it or do you think the best of it. I, That's one of the reasons I wanted to yeah. see it integrated with yeah. GIS because to develop those sorts of comparisons, yeah. you need both the mapping and the data. Yep. Yeah, if it's a heat map that does the entire city, yeah. then we can see which parts of town, like the ones way out on the edge where those developers right. don't even put trees in. So it will be the entire city, and I know they are overlaying it with um, different factors, so they will be probably looking at uh, socioeconomic status, um, land cover to see, you know, where those correlations lie uh, in our, uh, you know, heat vulnerability. You know, we had a question on the Zoom chat as well over here. Yeah. Um, so it was asked, um, has, it, has this been done in other cities? And if so, what was their experience to our knowledge? Uh, we know that um, Aust the city of Austin has done a similar project with the developed team. Um, I don't know what their um, experience has been. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't have that information. Um, but, you know, I've looked at um, examples of the end result that they um, produce and, you know, it, it's interactive um maps that um have some narrative along with it and so you know you can sort of use that in any way you wish to do so um and you know with each with each project there are different interns um and there's um you know a guidance team that is um based in langley and so they're you know scientists that are guiding this process um, so, you know, the experiences could be different just based on the intern working on that, 
but overall it's an experienced team who is leading this um, sort of endeavor. We also had another comment um, from Cody, um, just saying that he'd love to be involved with this. Okay, great. Okay, any other comments, questions? All right, so we motion. Oh, motion. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we can vote. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Motion passes, and um, if that does come to council, um, this will, the formal recommendation will be that the board uh, supports this project. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll go ahead and move on uh, to the next agenda item. Um, the next one was um, just something I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, so the League of Women Voters has um, approached me and they are looking to do a speaker event. Um, and this would be open to the public, but would also mostly be a benefit for the board and future committees and committee members. Um, and it would be essentially um, on the topic of environmental justice and what local communities and decision makers can do. Um, so this is something that's still in the planning phases um, and this would be funded through the League of Women Voters. Um, so this would be something that would, you know, tie into the equity piece of, you know, the board's sort of five main goals. Um, we're thinking, um, you know, I've, I've talked with um, Joan Warren, who is um, the one organizing this with uh, the League of Women Voters, um, and she's thinking of late April, um, dependent on um, if there is a speaker available. Um, and uh, just based on that, I, I know there are a couple ideas out there for who a speaker would be, but do you guys have any, any thoughts or concerns um, about hosting an event like that, um, you know, through the League of Women Voters that would essentially be to the benefit of the board, or do you have any ideas of how this might be better shaped to benefit the board? So I can look, is the speaker just speaking to the board? It would be to the board, but also to the public. So okay. it would be, um, you know, geared so it would towards- be a public event, mm -hmm. so, so. Right, so based on, you know, what individuals can do to shape um, environmental justice efforts, but also what local decision makers can do to shape environmental justice. I, I believe that uh, League of Women Voters have had several speakers. I, I think Chairman Lombard is, is involved in that capacity with the League of Women Voters. I am. Uh, Lori has been doing things, but I know that Jane has... Uh, uh, given them information, so uh, I mean, I, I think we should look for all opportunities to to increase public education on this, for sure. Okay. Um, excellent. So you know, we're going to try and put that together. Um, if you, if any of you wants to, you know, get involved in the planning process for that, feel free to let me know. Um, but obviously, dependent on. Um, speaker availability and uh, venue availability. And so we will try and make this shape up. Or if you have any ideas on local speakers or um, you know, people in the state who may be interested in um, providing that narrative to you know, the Wichita community, um, that's always welcome as well. Nina, um, is the expectation that someone from the sport itself would be one of the presenters? or they want someone other than, than one of us on the board? I believe they want um, somebody other than um, board members, but I think the expectation would be that um, it would be um, open to the board and we would probably have a few uh, members attend and you know, that that information. So Dorothy Barnett of the Climate and Energy Project would be an excellent speaker on this topic. And I can definitely connect you separately, but um, 
but and 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 on top of that, if there's more of a panel, she can also recommend other folks who would be excellent speakers on on this topic. Kansas Grassroots, Laura. Hmm? RCEP, Kansas Grassroots. Yep. Well, that because that that is more their focus, even than CEDs. Although I know they're affiliated, so I wonder if they might also be a good placement. Sure. They're also youth, which is nice. Okay. Um, well, that's all I had for that. I really just wanted to make you guys aware, uh, keep you in the loop with all of the sort of sustainability related um, projects and events that are going on, um, because I want you guys to be very involved in this process as we move forward. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next thing. Um, I know that you all have talked about wanting to provide some updates from your respective boards or other work um, that you're doing. Um, nobody sent me any updates um, as of the beginning of this meeting, but did anyone want to give any brief updates on anything at this time? Well, I can fill you in a little bit on what we're doing with the single use plastic bag task force. So, uh, sorry. Okay. So I wanted to fill you in on what we're doing with the single use plastic bag task force. Adam is actually our facilitator with the city. So he's got all the insight scoop on it too. Um, but we were going to do a workshop for the city council yesterday. And then they said, why don't we do individual meetings with council members first? So that's the plan right now. And Adam is working with Lynn Master to get that set. Um, we still want to try to bring this to the city council, educate some of them who may be unsure about exactly what we're proposing before we go to the council and ask them to vote on this. So that's the plan at this point. Um, we are hopeful that the bill to ban all bans of single use items doesn't make it out of the house of representatives in the state of Kansas. But so far it's probably gone through the Senate. So they may stop us from doing anything. At some point we're all gonna have to contact our house members and maybe the, well, I can't remember the name of the committee in the house to make, to ask them not to get it through the house, to put it to the house board. So that's kind of where we stand right now. I don't know if it's good or bad. We'll find out soon. I'm representing the um, Wichita Sedgwick County Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals. And honestly, um, there's not much to say other than that I have noticed a slight increase in the number of infill projects and multifamily housing projects integrated into neighborhoods, which will hopefully increase density, which will increase walkability. But Wichita is still fundamentally a city that sprawls. All our development community is interested in building great big developments out of the edges. And I don't think that's going to change until we change regulations because they have at the moment no incentive not to and for what it's worth that's what's going on with my boards do you think it's places for people that are thinking to look for their case that you think i think it's certainly helping yes it's it's starting to get at least a small handful of developers to consider the fact that there are alternatives which is wonderful yeah but rare still yeah uh, I'm not on a committee, but I do work for, I do work for Evergy, and um, this year, um, the last few months, Evergy's always host of energy efficiency measures uh, with Kansas Corporation Commission. So, if at any time the board would like a, a look again at today, it's just an ask, and maybe we wait till later in the year when we either get approval or denial. But if there's ever a desire to, to get the details on what those energy efficiency programs were. Um, I'll be happy to prepare to do that. But again, we could do it now where it's just an ask, or we could do it um, in the fall once we have an outcome. 
I am on the uh, stormwater advisory board. We haven't met a whole lot recently, but uh, there are some issues uh, that like a couple months ago we met in regard to FEMA floodplain regulations and, and things that were there's some overreaching of FEMA out there, possibly. So we're just kind of monitoring that. Great. Can I ask you? I know there was a, a relatively recent and large change in the drainage requirements in order to facilitate drainage on, on developments. Are, is the board ready to pursue another big project and perhaps start talking about green infrastructure or, or not? Uh, I, I don't know that I can speak for the board. When you say a big change recently, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, my boss, David Foster, was involved right. in it when he was on the planning commission. Um, it was it was basically, I, I want to say it was a 1% requirement in developers. So basically, people would build brand new developments full of brand new houses, and they'd all flood because the water wasn't going anywhere, because our regulations didn't require it to go anywhere. And that's been changed. But um, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure I completely tracked that, because, I mean, like I said, I worked 30, 40 years in it, and those kind of things have been going on throughout that whole time okay. frame. So okay. that, I know 10, 15 years ago, the city came up with a drainage ordinance that really put a lot of that in the writing, mm -hmm. which I think uh, is still be kind of Well, that's one that was revised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a couple of years ago yeah. now. It was massively I revised. That, that, you know, development, whether it's on the house, on the Orders or even in town, there's requirements for detention and water quality. And it, uh, it's, it's it's pretty cut dry and regulated, pretty you know, pretty intensely. So I just wondered if there's any discussion, any interest that you've noticed on pursuing green solutions as opposed to gray solutions for stormwater management yet on your board. Uh, we haven't met enough recently to talk about that specific, but I, I don't mind bringing it up with them. I mean, a lot of the stormwater stuff is a bit green, but it depends on development and who does it. And yeah. Kind of so, yeah. uh, I was hoping, but you know, <laughs> poor Lauren. <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone on any of our board members on? Zoom want to give any updates at this time? You're not required to, so <laughs> no pressure. Sure, I'll go for the park board. Uh, as the speaker said in the beginning, uh, he brought the park board recommendations and, and the staff is working on a tree policy. And so hopefully in the next Two meetings or so that that will be brought to us for a rec making a recommendation to the council on how to go forward with the tree policy. You know, it's a it's a much larger project than just uh, uh, putting a tree policy out there. There has to be a lot of things thought about um, when you ask developers to do things. There's there's costs involved and it's private property, so other things. It's going to take some time to uh, put all those things into place because you want to get it right the first time versus um, putting something out there and then having to add some things to it. So um, hopefully in the next couple of months, we at least will have a, a preliminary draft passed to the park board. Um, anybody else at this time? I think, I think we do, but maybe he's on mute. I can't hear him. From um, bike head. How about now? Yep, we can hear you. All right. <laughs> Took four people to figure that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, on the bike ped board, just as of today, uh, we took action at our last meeting, uh, but today we finalized budget recommendations to the city council and the city manager regarding the general operating budget, 
we introduced uh, 10 projects, a lot of them dealing with safety uh, for both bicyclist and pedestrian. Uh, one of the uh, recommendations is to uh, start a uh, study on the possibility of using the flood control levees as uh, bike and hiking trails. And then on the uh, big project side, uh, that, that's projects that are around a million dollars or more. We uh, had our number one priority of finishing the uh, Redbud Trail from Woodlawn to K96. And that would, if that section is completed, the trail would run from the I-135 and canal route to Handover and ultimately to Augusta. So uh, that's sort of a recap of the big projects. Uh, there's a few other ones that I don't have committed to memory, but anybody on this group that would like a copy of uh, our uh, recommendations, be happy to forward those to them, or I could just give them to everyone. Sounds good. Yeah, Jack, if you want to send that to me, I can uh, distribute that to the group if they want to uh, take a look um, after our meeting's over. Sure. Well, as soon as we get word uh, that the council has them, um, I'd like to give them first a look at it, and then I'll be glad to do that. Sounds great. Thank you. At some point, can we get the tree policy review as well? Whenever it's to the point where it's available to somebody besides yeah, we'll, um, we'll talk to staff about that, see when they're ready to sort of distribute that. Um, okay. When things are in draft form, they can get to it. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll touch base about that and I can follow up with you guys. Okay. Um, for the sake of time, let's go ahead and um, move on to our next item. Um, EFC is here to give you guys an update on the project. We're going to do, um, you know, some brainstorming about um, the project. You all got the um, draft of the project initiative. I've gotten some feedback from you guys. Um, but this is your chance to um, take a look at those different categories, provide some feedback in person, um, and then I'll let uh, Tanya go for the rest. You guys have busy meetings, so I'm going to try to be quick with this stuff so we can get to the good stuff where you're sharing your ideas and um, getting. And so, folks on Zoom, uh, Jeff's going to go through the slides with us so we can dive in um, a little bit about, okay, I can't do it. <laughs> the Environmental Finance Center, uh, each EPA region has an Environmental Finance Center. So we're that green swath in the middle where EPA region seven, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and it just so happens which has safe lucky enough to have the EFC for this region. So keep going. Um, our mission just as an ESC is to build capacity for addressing environmental challenges that might be building capacity for a community, for a state, for the whole region, for a nonprofit, we just hit everybody. A few projects that we work on just so you can kind of understand what we do in the scope. We've worked on food summits, we're bringing a food summit to here in Wichita, bringing stakeholders together to talk about reducing food loss and waste. Yeah. Trash trap study in St. Louis. Uh, they put these trash traps or litter collection devices in the waterways, and then we're pulling that out, counting it, and then we'll do, uh, the ESC is going to do data analysis on that, kind of like the Wichita Litter Study, just aquatic version. Uh, community sustainability tool, we're helping water and wastewater utilities um, for communities assess whether their infrastructure investments are sustainable over time. Uh, we did a healthy watershed cost benefit analysis for the Miramac watershed in Missouri, helped a community in Macy, Nebraska, just do some education and outreach about their water and wastewater systems. And then we're also working on a, a recycling market study for Kansas. That's coming out at, by the end of this year, it should be really good. So that brings us to this project. And the city of Wichita in January of 2021 reached out to us and they said, you know, we really want to amp up sustainability in Wichita. We see this need, we hear the public, we we're just want to move forward, provide us some, some, some good data, your experience, your research, give us a plan. So they asked us to come up with a list of initiatives, a little bit of a way to prioritize these and some recommendations. We're like, great, sounds good. 
then they started hearing from the community that and this board was established and so this is just kind of the meshing of those two um, efforts so we as uh, for this project um, developed this venn diagram of what sustainability is you you guys have looked at this and reviewed it in the past if you have suggestions or anything um, we'd love to hear them uh, but you know we just need a scope kind of 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 what sustainability means to us and this diagram may change and grow over time in wichita it's not static it's not forever it's just right now this is how we're defining it and as as this board and our community grows and change it might adjust you saw this in your packet of materials this is just the schedule of kind of how the the project rolled forward here's the good stuff so um all of the projects and programs that we've identified will be scored using this matrix. And this matrix, as you can see, the colors match the previous screen and the Venn diagram we've developed. So, oh, flip back to the Venn diagram real quick. So this project is, is focused on projects. We know that there are projects in all parts of sustainability that the Wichita can take on, but this project is really just focusing on this side of the graph. What are those environmental things we can do? What are those environmental initiatives? We'll start there. So going back, even though all our projects are environmental, we're scoring them in all the areas of sustainability, community, equity, um, safety hazard mitigation, all those things. So any, and let's go to the example. So you can just see each category will get scored between a what, zero and three. And then each one will have, each project will have an overall score we've developed We'll do a cost benefit ratio. So doing a comparison of the costs versus the benefits. We're not including this last one in that ratio just because just because the city has a goal about it. We didn't feel like really met the criteria of like benefit um, in sustainability necessarily. So we're just leaving this one out of that cost benefit ratio. Um, and eventually we'll also um, include the information there about you know, we're using that ACE and CDP, those surveys as a measuring stick to see how we're doing. So we just wanna make sure everybody knows like, hey, here are the things that are gonna bump us up. And just cause something doesn't, doesn't mean we wouldn't do it. It's just, it's good to know and have that reference. But again, that will not impact the score. Any questions or feedback on the matrix? Like the matrix, I, I, I don't envy the person who has to sort out which project goes in and into which column because yeah, no. they all seem to do multiples. <laughs> yes. Um, it had this, this whole project has been a test of like or brain organization <laughs> and <laughs> categorizing and yeah, things really dovetail together, even just dividing. So if we skip to the next slide. Even just categorizing one project into which of these areas, because sustainability is so intermeshed, one project could hit multiple areas. And so, you know, we do the best we can in putting it in the in the area that it we think it should be in, but it could also be, you know, adding points in CDP to a couple of areas or kind of dovetailing things together. So um, yeah, so all of the initiatives that we have on the, the big long list are divided into these nine categories or nine strategy areas. So what we're going to do now is flip to the next slide. We're going to flock together and make a splash. I just needed a catchphrase to go along with my slide that I thought was cute. Uh, you're going to make a splash with your ideas and suggestions. So we're going to spend, what time is it? We're going to spend nine minutes. We're going to do like two minutes at each station um, around the room and Jeff's going to lead the online group in a discussion. And each each of these have two sides. So find your favorite area. There are these pages that list the, the all the initiatives and it's just what you saw in your packet. You can circle the ones you think are great, put a star by a happy face. If we've left something off, you can write them on here or you can write them on here and we'll collect your ideas. We will also stay after as long as you want to and letting you go around and finish providing your input. 
or shoot us an email. I gave everybody a card and it's got the back of it has that EFC email or my own email address on the front. Send me your feedback, what items, tell me what you like that's on the list and what's missing. And we've been listening. We've got the one of the things in green space is about heat island effect. Um, there's some information about the tree canopy, but we're going to tweak it in response to what we heard today and um, make it a little bit more specific. So I'm going to let you go. Just go and provide feedback for us. And your ideas and information will help build this plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. What do you call it when it's not a dad when they do dad jokes? There's got to be a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to online folks feel free to dive in. I'm going to mute you on our end so you can speak freely. Sounds good. And make sure that you mute Nina so that we're not hearing you too. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to work. <laughs> I got it. I don't think I can mute Nina. I got it. Don't worry. Thank you. All right. We'd love to hear your conversation, but I know. I know. Maybe say, nope. maybe do one. And then didn't work. Dina, <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're we can still hear you on our end. We were really okay. Us. But they can't hear us. Well, <laughs> yeah, doesn't help. I would say two. Um, I'll text well. Tanya. You know, if anything just comes to mind, you know, if you don't even have to look at the the list. Right. Yeah. Just anything oh. in these categories that you feel just is really important that needs to be a part right. of this uh, process. All right, let's see if we can out talk them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. I texted oh, to see oh, if they can mute on that down. side. On our list. This is going to be fun. This is going to really test my uh, ability to not be totally distracted by things. So I hopefully you can see, I, by the way, I'm Jeff Severin. I'm a, a program manager with the EFC. I've been working on this project this year. Um, I've actually been with the EFC for the last year, just a little over a year. And prior to that, um, worked for the University of Kansas, the director of the Center for Sustainability there for its entirety. So that was 14 years of my life. Um, dedicated to sustainability initiatives like this. So I'm happy to be supporting this project here. So looking at the list, since we only have a little bit of time, are, is there an area that the board members that are still on the call would like to dig into a little bit and discuss? Um, I had put in, in the chat a couple of places. Um, the first one in, in Bailey, he just noted that maybe this was in a different section that I missed, but um, on green space and or um, as it may be in the built environment, uh, just really highlighting more community gardens throughout throughout Wichita okay. uh, for a number of reasons. And then, um, I, you know, I, I, I would have, personally, I would have put that in green space, but like she said earlier in her remarks, it's hard necessarily to pick which one you're going to put it in. <laughs> right. Um, but I know that there's some initiatives already in the work on that. Um, and then on waste management, um, and maybe this again is somewhere I, I didn't see it, but kind of going to the single use um, plastic issue and really trying to minimize that. And yeah, can you hear me? This is Jack Brown. Jack? Yeah. yeah, I agree exactly. I you have a I have a I'm teaching a class right now at KU. So my students have been giving me some input. Community garden was one of them. Yeah. And I would also support and think it would be a good idea to look at uh, uh, solid waste issues. It's been a challenge. Plastic in the uh, waste stream. I can't see the list, but uh, yeah, and that's all the different departments. That's where I'm at right now. Which one do you want to look at? So you both you both mentioned community gardens as a a priority do you have is it just some like a something maybe and maybe you put it in the chat is there something specific about community gardens that you'd like to see or what you know especially you know what are your students saying about it what are you hoping to see as an initiative i i well yeah i guess at wichita state there is one and so i'm thinking what i'm feedback i'm getting is maybe 
design. Something on that scale or maybe larger for the community that's being done right now at Wichita State. Okay. I know that um, Riverside is, is looking at potential of adding a, um, a community garden actually in the park. And it would be kind of a test model for maybe doing these in other, other parks as well where um, there would be a lot of community aspects around it. So you have the you have a community garden. There may be some level of see if you're actually going to have a box of you know to, to, um, to you know grow things in privately. But the idea around it basically is that you can do a lot of educational programs around gardening. You could do um, different you know types of gardens that maybe would bring in bees. Um, create you know a venue for more community um, within the park in a different way. So it's, it's a concept right now that will hopefully be tested here in Riverside where I live, but I know that the idea is they do that all over the, the city in different ways. Great. Um, Philip saying. Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah, go, right, go ahead. Um, Student also suggested uh, the uh, Sherhart Environmental Magnet School, I think, uh, mm -hmm. doing something along these lines. And maybe that would be a, uh, an area where you could integrate education and, and community gardens and green things. Great. Yep. Jeff, I might suggest, since you know we're kind of very limited on time in this yeah. menu. <laughs> Um, and, and I know our next section too would probably warrant more time than we're going to have, but um, I might suggest to Nina that you guys come back and that we spend a full session, maybe a couple months down the road, just working on this. Instead of only having eight minutes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that um, as part of our process, we, I mean, on our timeline, um, we'll have a draft report of this by the end of March okay. um, or for the I think in time for your, your March meeting um, yeah I mean it we're just on a tight timeline to to get this list of projects narrowed down so that we can put together that draft report mm -hmm. um, because we'll be taking this list this very large list um, and, and turning that into like a, a roadmap. Um, and so there will be, um, I know that, I don't know if she shared yet or if it's on another slide, um, we'll be asking folks to submit any additional comments, um, I think by early next week. Um, okay. And so let's see if that's in here. No, I'm not seeing it hey, on Jeff. slides anywhere. Yeah. Is it, this is Penny, if it's okay yeah. for me, me to chime in. I'm from the city, you don't talk too much, but Nina's on my team and I usually just come to observe. But um, to your point, Laura, how this is gonna be a very long-term effort, I think that we should kind of view this list as a living list. And our work now would be to like, how do we set the framework just at a roadmap, you know, because we may want to take things away or add to, as time goes on, you know, basically forever. And so if we can agree now on a way to organize that type of priority, um, prioritization, that's kind of what we want now. And then, like you're saying, the conversation will be ongoing for a long time about what goes where and, and how do we organize it. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for making that point, Penny. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's designed as a tool that you guys can continue to use mm -hmm. from this point forward and add those things to um, and and use it to evaluate you know additional projects that, that you want to focus on so just to kind of recap it would be helpful for you if all of us on the board maybe spent the next few days really looking because we got it not too long ago um i don't know how many of us had a chance to really digest it before this meeting mm -hmm. so if you maybe you have created a deadline or if you give us a deadline of x date to say we really would like to see these things done each of us and you get right. that you know and maybe we're picking five from each thing or however many you think is doable um, of, out of each category that we're really, each one of us really thinks is important. Does that make sense? Yeah. Something like that and provide that feedback through Nina. Sorry, that's my dog. They're fighting. 
<laughs> Something like that. Okay. Um, I'm getting a note that says finish up. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yes, um, and I'll make sure that, that you guys have that information in terms of um, when, and she'll probably say it right as soon as I get off, as we go, go back to the main room, but um, being able to um, get that feedback and, um, and yeah, if it's, it doesn't have to be every single item, but if there are items, you know, if there's sections of that that you feel, feel really strongly about or have particular knowledge about, I think focus on those areas and just answer those two really quick questions. Are there things that you don't see that you'd like to see or are there um, things that you really like that we think are, should be priorities? Okay. All right, I'm gonna be quiet now so that they can pick back up in there. All right, thanks guys. It sounds like you had um, a good discussion there. Um, and again, we can always um, continue offline and provide um, feedback and um, we'll touch base with anything that needs to be um, followed up on. So I know we are over time. Um, and I know you guys wanted to have a chance to discuss. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I know we're over time, um, and I know you guys wanted to have a chance to um, have a bit of a brainstorm discussion um, aside from this. Um, project update. So if you wanted to take a few minutes, we can continue um, if you all have time. Otherwise, uh, we may need to table it for um, our next meeting. But how you know, yes, um, I would suggest that we do table it till the next meeting. because I don't think the five or 10 minutes that we can, you know, maybe give now is going to do it justice by any means. Um, I would suggest strongly that we spend the next session really focused on our strategy and our committees and whatnot because we didn't have time today. Yep, I can put that up top of the list for um, next time. And um, again, if you guys have those um, committee suggestions ahead of time, please do send them to me so that we can put them all together. Um, I know we had kind of gone back and forth on that and I had received um, some information from some of you, uh, but not um, from everyone on um, committee ideas. So if we could get that for the next time, then we can jump right into it and have enough time for discussion. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Well, then we're already into March by next month. So we'll Okay, um, is there anything else? For the good of the board before we adjourn. Oh. Um, I think I think we can call it a day then. We'll go ahead and adjourn. I don't think we need to take a vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for your participation today. Yeah. Um, we'll pass along all that feedback and um, we'll jump right in next time. Thank you. I know, I missed the second one. Oh, yeah, I missed the overall.